Welcome to the spring 2024 semester of Applications of Deep Neural Networks at Washington University. This is a course, this is the first installment in this course that will run the entire semester about PyTorch and deep learning. So in this course, you're going to learn all about deep learning and using PyTorch to achieve that. We're gonna learn about convolution neural networks, multi-neural network detection, like, or multi-image detection, like YOLO. We're going to get into transformers and learn about uh, large language models, which are absolutely taking the world by storm. You'll see ChatGPT. You'll even see how to use ChatGPT to help you on some of the assignments in this semester. It is absolutely not cheating to use ChatGPT in this course. That is one of the tools that you will certainly have available to you in the real world outside of academia. And that is a tool that I very much encourage you to make use of in this course. So this course is entirely in GitHub Jupyter Notebooks, IPYNB file. Jupyter Notebooks, like you see here, are notebooks that contain a mix of Python code and also Markdown. And the Markdown describes the entire course. This is pretty much book length. You'll, it'd be about 500 pages if you were to print out this entire course, all 13 modules. Each module is approximately a chapter. Now, as you work through this, when you want to be able to run actual Python code in this, you have a number of options there. The recommended path is to use something called Google Colab. And I'll show you Colab right here. Now, I have never seen this happen, but for some bizarre reason, my link or my image that normally is a nice open and collab badge is not working in GitHub for some reason. But normally there'd be a nice badge there. I'll get that resolved. But if you click on it, you'll see the nice badge because now it's actually working in Colab and the, the link is there. I just don't know why GitHub is not displaying those. Maybe they're having some dispute with Google, but we will, we will make use of this. You'll notice I do have Pro Plus. You can pay a subscription and get more access to GPUs than you normally would have. The free version is plenty good for the course. It does give you access to GPUs and you can do that through runtime and then change runtime type. I have more options here available because I, I have the subscription. I believe the free version and they change this a lot, but the free version normally has the, the lower end GPU. I don't use the higher ones unless I need them because I only have so many credits in a month and I don't want to exhaust that prematurely. So now that you're in here, you could actually run Python code. And in this introduction one, there is some code. There's some code here. You'll see this block in many of the notebooks. This block just checks to see if we have Colab available and I wrote it, so I, I trust it. You can trust it too. And it does say unrecognized runtime PyTorch. That's nothing to worry about. That is just the environment that I set this up to use. If you're running it locally on your computer, then you'll, you'll want to be running in an environment called PyTorch. And I have instructions linked in to tell you how to do that. Like you can see here, I have instructions talking about how to install it on a PyTorch on an M1 Mac. I have similar instructions for Windows. This does work pretty well on, on a Macintosh as well. If you have the later M1 or M2s, if you have Intel. So let's go to the very, very end where we've got some more Python code. So we can run this, and this is actual Python code. This is a technical course. You'll be programming a lot in this. If you, it's expected that you have worked with Python before. We'll start out with a little review of Python at the beginning of the course, but I, I expect that you already have knowledge of Python. And you can see it prints out some stats here. Oh, I need to update that, but um, it still works. So it's telling you that MPS for Apple is not available, but the GPU is available. These little deprecated messages, you tend to get those a lot because they're changing the stuff around like crazy. I have to go through and fix usually quite a few of those at the beginning of each semester. But they basically just gave you a different way to detect if MPS is available or not. All right, so this course, definitely I recommend using Colab. It's going to be the path of least resistance. When you're doing this kind of thing at a company, you're going to have some environment. It's going to be like a SageMaker or a Domino Data Lab or something that is probably running your Python code. 
rather than just installing everything, installing a GPU onto, onto your own like laptop, desktop, computer. So deep learning, this is basically what neural networks sort of grew out of, and it's all based very much on neural networks. These four individuals were very much the luminaries of deep neural network, Jan LeCurn, Jeffrey Hinton, Yashua Bengio, and Andrew Ning. I've watched many videos by, by all of these. They, they are great. And then what is deep learning? Machine learning really in general, traditionally, you would have input data. They would hire a programmer to write program code to deal with that input data. All of these would go into the computer. The computer would run the program code, process the input data, and you would get your output. Now you provide the computer with your input data, just like before, but you give it what the expected outputs are, at least in supervised learning, as not always. And then the program give the computer gives you the program code running the model code or the, the training code and other things. And this is, this is a model. And this model lets the computer learn to do a lot of the things that you would have traditionally programmed it to do. Even write program code as we see with large language models. So here are the major categories of processing with deep learning and machine learning that we're going to learn about. Computer vision. This course does a lot with computer vision because neural networks, computer vision is really one of the main things that they they sort of came on to, to do. Tabular data, that's where you're crossing very close to the statisticians, where you're analyzing all of this data, predicting some output, doing classification, regression. You're doing classification, regression, and these others as well. But this is very much, tabular data is very much the domain where you would have used a traditional model, like a gradient boosted machine or a support vector machine. This is definitely not neural network's strongest area, although it certainly can process tabular data, and we are certainly going to learn to process tabular data in this course. It's just not gonna be the focus. These others are going to be more and more the focus. Natural language processing, this, has neural networks have just taken over and dominated this area in particular. Natural language processing, rather than, I don't know, getting a grammar book out and learning, teaching the computer, writing if statements for all the grammar rules, you just throw a ton of language at it and it learns the large language models. We will be working with large language models in this course, very important topic these days. Reinforcement learning is where you teach the computer to do process, like self-driving car or play a video game. We'll have one module on reinforcement learning and we'll see how we can make use of this. Time series is very important. This is predicting things over time. No, I'm not gonna teach you to beat the stock market. If I had learned that, I would not be here right now. I would be on a beach somewhere. But you can learn to predict things through time. And in many ways, natural language processing is similar to time series because you can think of the words and letters as things occurring over, over time. And then generative AI. I've had this little box in here for a long, long time. And I used to always say, oh, okay, generative AI, this is where the neural networks are taught to produce these kind of random, sort of outputs based on the input. Generative AI has absolutely taken the world by storm and I have increased what this course covers on generative AI considerably. We are also offering a course or a class entirely on generative AI. I am developing that one even now and it will be offered in the fall of 2024. So next semester, at least after the summer semester. So if you're interested in that one, let me know. Uh, subscribe to the channel. You'll, you'll definitely get updates when these things come about. So regression, classification, and beyond Regression was typically when you would teach a neural network or other model to predict a number. Classification was when you tried to predict if something is in one of several classes, often just two classes in the case of a binary classification. There's other model types other than neural networks that if you're dealing with tabular data, you may wanna look at a support vector machine, random forest, or gradient boosted machine, or even a good old fashioned linear regression if you so desire. We will be using Python. We will be using Python for this course. There are a number of different libraries and frameworks available for this. We will utilize um, PyTorch directly for many things. We'll use other things built on top of PyTorch. I used to teach this class on TensorFlow and Keras, but I have since 
completely moved over to PyTorch. PyTorch seems to be more and more of the dominant force in the deep learning area. Also, tokens and keys. You will need to make use of several tokens and keys. These are just access credentials that you will get for this course. If you're taking this course through Washington University, which I assume most of you are, you will get a homework submission API key. You'll get that emailed to you just before the class starts, just before I open the Canvas uh, course system. That allows you to submit the homework assignments. There are 10 homework assignments, programming assignments. Then there's other things. There's a Kaggle competition that you'll compete with your fellow students on and a final project. But the 10 programming assignments you will submit those with the API key, and that's how I know who, who you are. It will tell you pretty much what your grade will would be if you submitted the final one with that, and you can resubmit. You can fix other problems. There's no reason you can't have a perfect score on every single one of those 10 programming assignments. If you have questions about that, ask myself or probably your first line will be the TA for this course, which you'll be introduced to when we meet in a couple of weeks at the at the campus. Then you'll also get a, you'll need to create your own hugging face uh, key. This is free. Uh, you'll you'll see when to do it as, as we get there. And you will also need a open AI key so that you can access ChatGPT uh, programmatically. I will provide you with one of those. And that, you, you can get that key out of assignment six in Canvas. That does have a charge, not charged to you, but the, it's, it's provided through the university. So just use it for the course material and do not post it outside of this course. If you're watching this course on the internet, you need to provide your own open API key. Then I have some code here to check your Python installation, which we already ran through. If you're interested in installing this locally, you can certainly, you can certainly run pretty much every assignment, some will be harder than others to run locally. And I have indications in those as you as you make your way through the course. So this is the introduction to applications of deep neural networks. Look forward to seeing all of you in class when we meet in a couple of weeks and we'll get the we'll get things rolling. For those of you on the internet, certainly subscribe to the uh, our students as well. Subscribe to the to the YouTube channel and stay up to date with everything that I put out here and you'll you'll certainly see the generative AI course coming out soon.